Okay, and what we want to do in this video is explain the idea of movements along the supply curve. So we're still on the supply um, playlist and just kind of like movements along the demand curve, the idea is relatively similar, but we're looking at from the firm's point of view. So what we've got here is a supply curve. And as the supply curve here is upward sloping, we know that it obeys the law of supply. So the definition of a supply curve is this shows the relationship between the price of a good or service and the quantity supplied. And it is normally upward sloping. Yes, it is. Is. Okay, the supply schedule is a table showing quantity supplied at each price, and this is the supply schedule that we've been using all along in the previous videos. And um, just to be clear on this one, it of course it does obey the law of supply because as the price rises, quantity supplied increases, and as the price falls, quantity supplied also is reduced. So a few more definitions now. Okay, so supply is the willingness and ability of producers to produce a quantity of a good or service. Cetris paribus is a lack Latin expression meaning other things being equal and the law of supply as the price for good rises the quantity supplied will normally rise now when the price for good or service rises quantity supply of that good or service rises excuse me and when the price of a good or service falls the quantity supplied of that good or service falls now the law of supply tells us that the quantity supplied depends on the price of the good when the price of the good changes this is known as a movement along the supply curve and only a change in price can cause a movement, just like demand, okay? So we're, again, just to be clear on this one, though we're talking about supply, a movement up the supply curve. So the price of the good, a change in the price of the good itself, okay? So if the price of the good rises, suppliers will supply more of that good. This is because there's a greater financial reward to the firm from producing the good, and this results in a movement upwards along the existing supply curve. So what we've got here is we've got our title, we've got our price with currency, we've got our origin, we've got our quantity with units per time period, all right? And we've got our S1 here. So again, there's no movement here because there is only one price. Price has to change in order for a movement to take effect. So when the price rises to P2, what we have is an increase in quantity supplied. Now this is really important here. There is a movement up the supply curve from this point to this point here. The supply curve itself has not changed, okay? And a movement is only ever caused by a change in price moving from one point along an existing supply curve to another point along an existing supply curve. But please don't forget, this is an increase in quantity supplied from Q1 to here, Q2. All right, so a movement is caused by a change in price that is a change in quantity supplied. In this case, there was a movement up the supply curve and that caused an increase in quantity supplied from P1 to P2 caused quantity supply to increase from Q1 to Q2. The supply curve itself has not changed. It has stayed exactly the same. What has changed is price and that causes a movement which causes a change in quantity supplied. If the price of the good itself falls, there is not the same financial return in the good for the suppliers. The, the profit margin per good sold has been reduced. Therefore, the incentive to produce that particular good from that firm is also reduced. And when, guys, about economics, it all comes down to the incentives. Right, follow the incentives. You'll you'll, you'll understand everything. So a down uh, a reduction in the in the uh, price of the good itself causes a movement downwards along the existing supply curve. So again, I will always, and I'm sure you may have spotted this by now, repeat myself. So what we're saying here, first of all, is that there is no movement because price needs to change first. Secondly, now there has been a change in price. That reduced price for the good that they, this firm is selling um, has caused quantity demanded to reduce. Now, what has happened? The supply curve itself has not changed. We have, because of the reduction in price from P1 down to P2, there has been a movement along the existing supply curve, giving us a reduction in quantity supplied from Q1 to Q2. Now, a movement is caused by a change in the selling price of the good itself. We move from this point on the supply curve down to this new point on the supply curve. This is a decrease in quantity supplied from Q1 over to here, which is Q2. Um, again, I really, really want you to understand that, that what has happened is the supply curve itself has not changed. This is a movement and a movement is caused by a change in price and a movement or a change in price causes a change in quantity supplied. Now, the change in the price of the good itself is the only factor that causes a movement along the existing supply curve. All other factors that affect supply cause a shift. Guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really hope this helps and I very much look forward to seeing you in the next video.